Thanks very much, Suzanne. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Quinn, and I am really pleased to be here to tell you a bit about how I use systemic practice in a family and childcare setting. So I am a social worker, and I'm currently employed as a senior mental health practitioner for the crisis team within CAMS, and I cover the Belfast and Southeastern Trust areas. I am a qualified systemic practitioner, and I'm currently undergoing my final year as a trainee systemic psychotherapist. So my first slide is really about my professional background. I began my systemic training when I was a social worker in Gateway in the Southeastern Trust. I had been a Gateway social worker for about five or six years at the time. Um, I had completed my consolidation or my specific award for PQ and part of my specialist award for my family group conference training. But what I was looking for was a course that would really develop me as a social worker in my everyday practice. I initially had some reservations about doing the course because I thought that it might be more therapeutic and not actually work with the high level of assessment and risk that, that, that was being undertaken in my daily work in Gateway. However, actually doing the foundation level um, and moving on intermediate, I found that there was a significant enhancement in how I underwent my assessments within Gateway. And that brings me to my slide, systemic practice and assessment. When I was in family and childcare, assessments were constant in Gateway. They were daily occurrence, completing unit trainees. And the ACE questionnaires were being introduced as well. And there were some talk from staff that there was a lot of box ticking exercises in social work. And I'm sure he's all familiar with the old saying, more paperwork than people work. So systemic practice for me brought the people back to the center of the work and really viewing an assessment as an intervention in its own right. Systemic practice is underpinned with the idea that family consists of complex relationships, each of which are interlinked and they all impact each other. And those relationships support a family system and that system is functioning, whether it's deemed at any point to be functioning well or less well, or maybe a family are struggling well or struggling a bit much. And that's usually when social workers become involved. And my learning really helped me move away from that box ticking culture to embrace the idea of a narrative perspective, and really placing value on the family story that's being told at that time and helping me think about the context of family over time, using tools such as genograms or timelines that generate so much information that would actually detail a full unit genie assessment and helps identify risks and covers an ACE background and as well as help identifying supports for the family in and outside of the home. So my next slide, I'm going to talk to you about a case vignette. An example from practice, um, when I was working in Gateway, there was a young family referred by the police following a domestic incident. The mother had recently moved when pregnant to live in the dad's hometown, um, about 30 miles away, and their baby was a few weeks old and both parents were in their early 20s. And the nature of the domestic incident was physical violence from dad to mum. Now, previously, I might have been singularly focused on the incident and historical incidents of a similar nature. My assessment would have been really specific to the domestic violence risk assessment matrix, given my knowledge on risk factors and my practice experience. But by taking a systemic approach, I was able to look at things from a wider lens, as well as zooming in and bringing focus to the incident being reported. So this doesn't mean that I was not addressing the context and the detail of what had happened but I was able to apply the systemic concept of curiosity about other things as well, such as how did they get on and how did they decide on the move? How were they finding parenthood? And how did they usually fight? How did they make up? And how did they react to getting pregnant and becoming parents? What were their support systems like? What were their relations like with their parents and each other's parents and their friends? And how did they negotiate different parenting roles? All these types of things that I was interested in. And it was from this discussion that there was a narrative shared about emotional abuse and derogatory language from the dad to the mum and disclosures really that this wasn't the first incident and there'd been assaults during pregnancy. However, this was the first incident when the baby present and that's what had led mum to ring the police. So this was all still during an initial home visit and all this information was really relevant for the risk assessment of the child, but it was undertaken in a way that promoted a positive working relationship because I was asking the questions out of a position of curiosity and I was interested in their family dynamics and their relationship. And I also used my existent knowledge and experience about similar presentations in relation to domestic abuse. So that brings me to my next slide, which is about risk and systemic practice. So my experience is systemic practice doesn't exclude or discount the existence of risk. 
It supports ways in which to assess risk and ways in which to talk about risk openly and safely. So I used it when I was a gateway social worker from at all levels, from family support to child protection to lack. And you can really work systemically and still manage risk under your statutory duty. So systemic concepts help you think about risk, that it's more interactive than static. So like an assessment not being a one-off event, risk doesn't just exist in a vacuum, but does so within a context. And that makes it really helpful when working as a family and child care social worker, because we aren't just looking at removing the risk, but actually supporting changes that's going to reduce the risk of it reoccurring as well. So a systemic approach to risk recognises that it's recursive between the child and the parents and the professionals. And by that, I mean that different people have different ideas on risk. And often it falls to the social worker to negotiate and educate around what could be risky between the children and the parents and back to the different professionals working with the family and often your senior. So for example, within this case study, lots of different people had different ideas on what was most risky. So my principal pack was really concerned about how isolated the mum was and the postnatal period and vulnerability of the newborn. I was really focused on and really organised by the disclosure of the verbal abuse and the derogatory language because I was worried about the impact of course of control on the mother being able to access supports moving forward. The father actually didn't view the verbal component and how they thought to be an issue but he was really concerned about how he reacted to physical violence when under the influence of alcohol. And the mother, she didn't see the rest of her as severe as the rest of the baby if caught up in an altercation. So I had used this systemic principle of curiosity and a tentative rather than certain approach when asking questions around these issues. And I know that before I did this course, I would have been extremely well sympathetic um, to the scenario, quite certain and offering really clear direction on what my views on the risk were. Whereas with the systemic approach, you open up conversation that enables families to think about and more importantly, language the concept of risk rather than having a professional place their language and their meaning onto them, which can sometimes close conversations down. And it means we were able to learn other aspects of what might add to the risk rather than dictate which was most risky. And it wasn't a hierarchy. So in this instance, it opened up conversations about alcohol and about the impact of verbal abuse and the impact of isolation and about different levels of violence and how we rate it. And I was able to maintain the professional role of safeguarding in this case example, you know, the father was out of the home for the duration of the gateway involvement, but I was still able to facilitate these conversations as an ongoing intervention separately. And that brings me to systemic practice and safety, because safety planning is key for social workers when they're assessing risk. And that too has only been enhanced by my systemic practice learning. It was very much a joint approach between myself and the parents, sharing aspects of the risk and of family life that we wanted to manage and to protect. And that in turn really encouraged and promoted genuine collaboration rather than what sometimes can be tokenistic co-production. So by encouraging these open conversations about risk, the professional relationship can lead to a bit more transparency because these parents began to see each other again after bail was lifted. And in other instances that I've experienced where the relationship between social workers and the family have been quite directive, parents haven't disclosed when they've reconciled and as social workers, we've had suspicions and concerns around this and the risk is really difficult to manage for the children. Whereas in this case, we were able to support conversations in how did they hope to parent and how, if they wanted to reconcile, did they think that would look and what were their fears and hopes around their baby and their relationship and the wider family influence and how did they expect to work with social workers moving forward? And this was all happening while the child's name was placed in the register. I wanted to bring attention to the idea of systemic practice and family experience my next slide. Family and child care social work is complex and challenging and intense. And systemic practice for me was a way to help support holding the complexity of the multiple components within a system, the children, the parents, aunties, grannies, uncles, and multiple professionals. So this case I've discussed isn't out of the ordinary and obviously there's much more to it that I'm gonna detail in a short presentation. But the themes emerge that any social worker here would be familiar with when they've worked with intimate partner violence or other issues within family and childcare. Ideas around blame and shame and regret and aggression, avoidance, manipulation, fear and desperation, and often family members who just want things to go back to the way they were. So a systemic approach has really helped me hold those themes and work within really challenging contexts in a way that manages risk while recognising these interacting and complex feelings that children's and families might be experiencing. 
And in this case example, both the parents and the granny thanked me for how I supported them and talking about the issues, how they were treated and how they were listened to. And actually got a formal compliment, which at child protection level was rare and like gold dust. Um, and it's important to note that the risk management and the outcomes were the same, same practice. Like the dad was out of the home. It went to initial child protection case conference, contact was supervised. It's the process and how I went about them that were enhanced by my practice and my learning not the nature of what happened. And my final slide is really about systemic principles because I do think they're really accessible to everyone here. They are not concepts out of reach for social work and social care profession. It's about a relational position and a position of curiosity. So curiosity as a concept is so accessible, but it is definitely a discipline. It's trying not to always assume based on your practice experience, but being as interested in this family's experience in front of me as unique as I'm interested in what they have to offer, as well as my practice knowledge and the evidence base. And the relational idea, it just highlights the importance of relationships and how lasting family relationships are and how actually everything is interactional and recursive, including you know, that reflexive part about my role as a professional working with a complex family system and what am I bringing to this situation. So that is a quick idea of how I use systemic practice as a gateway social worker with one family.